Hey, you guys. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, I welcome you back to another wild and wonderful episode of Pep Talks with Megan De La Concha. Yes, we are back on video. And this is going to be a singing podcast. I'm just playing. I am... I love you guys. Like, I, I am not a monster. I would never do that to you. Um, if you're listening to this and not watching, you are thoroughly missing out. I'm in a different location, aka my living room. And my husband has taken our toddler out uh, to meet up with some friends and go outside and take a walk. And this is like, what do I do with myself? So exciting. Anyway, so I am sitting on the couch because I am officially in my third trimester. I can barely breathe. Like just that little bit of excitement has taken all of uh, my lung capacity. So please bear with me. But super excited to be here. I'm extra cozy, extra comfy, and I can't wait to have this conversation with you. And that's exactly what today is just going to be about is a conversation. If I'm looking off to your right, my left, it's only because I got to keep an eye on the time <laughs> because I could talk for hours. Something that I am aware of and I'm working on. Um, but yeah, today, I mean, we did a couple of how-tos in the last couple of weeks. And this really does add on to uh, the points that I've been driving home about how to build, you know, a life that is according to you, starting by your day, because it's it's all in the small steps, right? So whatever we can control, and I hate using that word because to some degree, yes, we are in control of our moments, but overall, we have to be willing to surrender to the fact that, you know, we're not ultimately in control, right? Like we could have a plan and that's great, but those plans can be thwarted at any given moment. So it's like knowing that you have a plan gives you a sense of direction. Um, it gives you a sense of, you know, growth and really pursuing the life that you want and who you are and who you want to become and just hitting this everyday goals in our life. But with the understanding that that can all be toppled over in any instant. So that's why it's important to when we stay in the moment, when we come home to the present, to really give thanks and to be grateful for just the moment that that you're in right now, wherever you're at, just be thankful for that. You know what? Like things are going smooth right now in this very moment. I'm not talking about what your bank account looks like. I'm not talking about the fight you had earlier with your partner or your spouse or your kids or your mom your sister, your best friend. I'm not talking about the homework assignment that's due. I'm not talking about the big project at work. I'm not talking about, you know, anything that's outside of what you're doing right now. So let's take a minute. We won't take a minute. Let's take a second because um, we, I got some talking to do to just take a deep breath in. I know I need it. And just to be thankful just for this moment right now, right now, not for the past, not for what's ahead, but just right now, just say the words, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for right now. And it feels so good, doesn't it? It feels so peaceful. It feels joyful. You feel confident and solid in this moment because that's all that you have. And things are going to come. The blessings, the victory, the vision, the struggles the strife, the adversity, it's all going to come. It's a part of life. But right now, oh, we can just rest easy. We can just rest in this moment because the answers are going to come, right? The, the answers are going to come. The, the, the questions are just secondary. The, pro, the, the solution to the problem is going to come. You're going to find out or you're going to figure it out. You don't have to conquer it right here, right now. And you don't have to feel defeated when you don't, if you feel like you don't have it all figured out. We so often become so focused. I'm really veering off here, but let's roll with it. 
we so often become so focused on difficult circumstances and difficult situations that we really like to linger there. And we really like to like, I imagine it as I'm, I don't know who, who it is, but the superhero character that has like, I don't know, lasers coming out of his eyes, <laughs> you know, like beaming, like me, like I'm literally laser focused on this problem or this situation or this difficulty and this issue. And what we do is we put this undue pressure and burden on ourselves to like, I got to figure it out right now. I mean, if I'm trying to paint a picture for you guys, because this is how I feel. It's like that there's a problem. Boom, laser focus, lasers, laser beams coming out of my eyes, focusing on it, trying to, you know, grab a chisel and a hammer, and I'm trying to chip, 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 chip away, trying to figure it out, you know, and then I'm I'm just trying to conquer, I'm trying to conquer the answer. I'm trying to get to a solution right away. And then when I don't have it, I feel defeated. And then what happens is when you linger and you linger and now you self-loathe and it's like, oh this, oh that. And guess what, my friend, you are already falling real fast into that pit called self-pity. And that is a dangerous place to go. We all know when you start, oh, when you start going down, the woe is me. I do this, I do that. Then you start finding faults in everybody else, and then you become irritated with them. You become sad about your situation. You become overwhelmed about your circumstances. You start measuring the quality of your life around your circumstances. It's like aren't you just so tired of doing that? I know I am. And I still do it. I'm more aware of it now because of the work that is required. But yeah, I definitely still find myself getting close to the edge of self-pity. And I pull myself back. I have to. You have to. Because it's not the circumstances that are the quality of your life. Like that's ridiculous, right? It's not the circumstances. It's learning how to look at those circumstances and yes, be thankful for them. And it's hard to do that. And the Lord knows it's hard to do that. He does not say that it's easy. He literally says, if you can just muster, muster up a little bit of courage to look beyond your circumstance and look at it through my eyes and look at it through my light, then it will give you the space that you need between the problem and you so that you can see it from a different perspective. And when you start to shift your perspective, and it's not a huge shift, you guys, it's literally like a one degree shift sometimes. And it's hard as heck. I get it. Uh, Trust me. But when you learn, and it takes practice because everything is a practice, every day is training. But when you're focused on learning these things and really applying them to your life, like being an active participant in your growth and in your change and in your transformation, these things, they're going to come. There's, they have no choice not to. So when you start to make that shift and you start to create that space between your circumstance and yourself, you can view it very differently. And most likely, in, you can view it in the light of God's presence. And that's where you can learn to be, you know what? I'm thankful for this struggle because one, I'm going to learn something so amazing out of this, right? I'm going to gain something from this, whether it's knowledge, whether it's wisdom and power, whether it's something about myself to become a better person. It's that challenge. It's that growth and that difficult situation or, you know, circumstance actually turns into an opportunity for good. But what happens is we don't like to take accountability and we don't like to take the responsibility of giving thanks. It's not a natural response for us. It's not. And again, the Lord knows that. It's not a natural response for us to be like, praise Jesus. I am 20. I was gonna say 20,000, but let's, let's say $20,000 in debt. I got 
negative 50 in my bank account. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I, now I'm not making fun of it because that's really what he wants us to do. But that is not a natural response. We'd be like, uh, <laughs> what are you having? And can I get some of that? Because <laughs> that's just, it's, it's unnatural right? Like how is that person not just crying and in and, and the depths of despair and trying to sell every single thing on, in her house to try to make some money? And, you know, so God calls for us to have what he think, what he not thinks, but what he describes as a supernatural response. And that is, whoa, slow the roll, right? Slow the roll. Let's create some space. This is our circumstance. And before we want to lunge into it like a caveman, he wants us to take a step back and say, you know what? Okay, this is the situation. Number one, maybe we should ask ourselves, how did I get into this situation? How did I get $20,000 in debt? It didn't just happen. Um, How did I get into the negative? What is creating the situation around me? And then instead of, coming at that full force with the negativity and the shame and the guilt, we can allow ourselves to just be real with us, be real with the situation and say, okay, well, yeah, you know, it was in my twenties, but I definitely, definitely lived beyond my means. And I might not have even known it. Like it might, I I don't know. It's not like I was going out and buying, you know, Fendi and Prada and Gucci, I was going to Target and I was spending a couple hundred bucks on home goods. I wanted to make my house feel good. I wanted to make my house feel pretty, right? It's my safe haven. If you didn't catch that episode last week, do so. Um, but only after you finish this one. <laughs> but but it, those are things like we might not have realized that we were purposefully living beyond our means, but we could have gotten ourselves in that much debt. And it's now carried over with us in our 30s and our 40s because we haven't made that change yet that we haven't created that self-awareness on how do I spend money? What is my relationship about money? So we're constantly finding ourselves in these difficult situations and we want to freak out. Who can I borrow money from? Where else can I get money? How many extra hours can I pick up? Et cetera, et cetera, right? So when you allow yourself space to just look at the circumstance and view it from God's point, from within God's presence and say, you know what? I can cry and throw a fit all I want, but this isn't the first time I've been here. And I bet most of us, including myself, can say that almost about every situation. I bet you are in the same relationship or have been in the same relationships as before. It might be with a different person, but the nature of the relationship, the environment of the relationship, the climate of the relationship, it's all the same. They, it's the same stuff, right? Or you get a new job and it ends up being the same, the same thing you just, you dealt with last job, a horrible manager, same position, maybe a little bit more pay, the same job description. There's no growth, right? Same thing with the money. Let's take the the debt, for instance. I'm sure it's not, the, it's not like you woke up one day and you were like, oh my God, this is my financial situation. I'm sure you've been in the negative before. I certainly have. I'm sure you've been in debt before and you've climbed out of it and you've gotten back in it. You've climbed out of it and you've gotten back in it. Or you just keep climbing in it. Right? But it isn't until God keeps putting these things in front of us for a reason to be like, listen, you keep praying for this. You keep praying for financial freedom. You keep praying for a loving and stable, secure relationship. You know, you keep praying for, you know, just that that career that you're working so hard for just to fall into your lap and, and have that promotion and have that title and really succeed in what it is that you're passionate about doing in your career. You're praying for that, but what are what are the circumstances surrounding your current circumstances? Let's take a look at that and see what we need to change. And that right there is the opportunity. That right there, just that simple mind mindset shift is the opportunity for you to say, oh, okay, I can easily claim victory over this problem. 
I can easily conquer this with the help of the Lord, of course, because he's showing me I keep continuing to be in these specific situations because of what? When you go into a problem or you go, you face your circumstance or a situation, a difficult one at that full force. And like I said, you've got those laser beams out. You're trying to chisel and hammer your way out of it. You're trying to find a solution. You're rustling through papers. You're like that comic. And if you're younger, you probably, you know, I mean, I am young, but if you are younger, you probably might not remember um, Kathy, the comic, I think, where she was just all like, bah! and like, she was just like crazy. Like it was reading the comic of like Kathy, the comic, if that's even the, the name of it, you guys know, um, she was so frazzled all the time and looking at it, it was like, you felt instant anxiety for her. So let's not even go there. I can't even, I can't even picture it right now because I can feel the anxiety coming up. But when you go at it like that in, in, in a craze, right. And you're all frazzled and you're desperate and it's like, whoa, you can't even catch your breath. You can't see where the opportunity is. You have no idea. You're totally, completely missing the opportunity to make those little shifts, to make that perspective change to where you can create the space between the difficulty and yourself and say, okay, what are the things that I'm doing to create this situation over and over again? And that turns that compass inward. And if you guys have been following me for a long time or for a while, I'm always about turning the compass inward. All of my clients, including myself, because I am and always will be my first client, this is how I got here, always want to say, well, this person does this and then this. And I, when I'm complaining, it's about external things all of the time right in the beginning. And I had to learn little by little to keep turning that compass inward. Okay, because where is it? There's a root of something. It is not the world against Megan, where everyone else is the problem and everything else is the problem. And I'm not, if you currently think like that, I heavily advise you to go back and listen to You Are the Problem, I don't even know what episode it is, and really take stock when you're ready to actually open your mind and open your heart and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you feel like it really is the world against you, go back and listen to that episode because it's never that. There is something in you that is creating these specific circumstances that are showing up in your life every single day. And God doesn't promise a life without struggle. He doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, I grant you a life without struggle. Nah. There is a life with struggle, but what he promises is that he's always there with you. He is always there walking with you, holding you by your right hand. He promises to guide you with his counsel. So when you take a moment to not be so self-sufficient and when a difficult situation arises or when your plans are thwarted or, or when you're in a really bad situation and or have been for a really long time, when you take the time to just talk to him about it and say, I invite you into this problem. Lord, we got, we got a problem, God. And I ain't doing this myself. You're involved. Come on. You can, like, that's just it. God is the best friend that you can actually do something about it. So when you invite him in and you start to look at the, the issue and say, yo, um, Lord, I need you to take a look at this and uh, I need you to tell me what's going on because I do not know. Then when you invite that into your life, you can start to see it from his vision and then be like, oh, so the reason a, B, and C keep happening in my life is because I keep doing D, E, F, X, Y, Z, right? And that's where the opportunity lies for something good to come out of something so difficult. Now, if you're just like, my whole life is a mess, girl, boy, I have been there. I know. 
oh my gosh, where it's like, I, I don't even know where to start. I look at all the pieces that are just laying there on the floor and I have, it's like, it's almost like I, you take 5,000 piece pubble, pubbles, puzzles and you dump all of them on the floor and you mix it all up. Imagine that. And then you got to put them all back together. Five 1,000 piece puzzles and all the pieces are mixed up together. It's hard enough to put one puzzle together when the pieces are mixed up let alone five. But it's a reality for a lot of us. It was definitely a reality for me. Sometimes I feel like it's a current reality. And so we understand the feeling of being overwhelmed where it's like, well, everywhere I turn, it's a difficult circumstance. So where do I find the space to be thankful? Where I'm tired of trying to find the opportunity. I'm tired of trying to be like grateful for this moment and know that it's because God is drawing me closer to him. I'm tired of it. I get that. I really do. I have been there and we're going to be there again. And it, that again, that's why it's called training. You're never going to have it down perfect every single time. But if you try your hardest to plow your way, through the mud and the thick and the grossness and society and people telling you this and you measuring your life based on your circumstances and and you get through the imposter syndrome and you have enough courage to get through the comparison syndrome and come out through and just say, God, just please help me. Please help me. Like I'm trying. I'm really trying to find the opportunity in this circumstance. I'm really trying because I want to have a different perspective. I want to have a different view because I'm so tired of living in my circumstances. I want to live above my circumstances, but I need help. Do you even know what that mustard seed of faith will bring to you? You do not. You do not have to have a whole field of crops worth of faith to understand, to receive the blessing to receive the wisdom and the understanding that's in store for you to get the good opportunity that's full of abundance and full of what you need. You need a little tiny mustard seed of faith to have the courage to plow through difficult circumstances, to not let them drag you down, to not measure the quality of your life based on what you think is going on around you. What you see is distorted. Our vision of things is a lie, right? We shouldn't rely on outside circumstances because why? Because they change with the coming and going of the wind. They're not secure. They're not stable. Just like people. Why do you care what people think about you? Do you feel the same way about every single person in your life at every single minute of the day? Absolutely not. Take the person that you love the absolute most. There are times you do not like them. Right? So you should not rely on outside circumstances. You should not rely on the feelings of other people. We are emotional beings. Our feelings come and go. We get annoyed at things that we were just excited about yesterday. We get irritated at things that we've been praying for and wishing for. We're on emotional roller coasters. So why on earth would we rely on what we think that we see and what we think our vision is? This is my reality. No, this is just a moment in time. This is just a situation. This is just a circumstance. That's it. But you have the power. You have the awareness. It's all within you to shift one degree of your perspective to say, where is the opportunity? 
that lies within this difficulty. This is not going to drag me down. This doesn't define my life. This isn't who I am. It isn't, this is, doesn't determine where I'm going. This is no measure of any standard of who I am and whose I am. This is just a blip on the radar of life. And a lot of times we do get dragged down and that's okay too. Because we can still learn from that. And then the next time we just get a little bit stronger. We do a little bit better. We grow a little bit more. You just need a little tiny bit of courage to get through those difficult circumstances, to get through those situations, to see the opportunity that is meant for good, meant for good. Everything in your life, God allows. Nothing happens by surprise. Nothing happens and you're like, oh, hey God, I'm over here. He's like, oh, what? Oh, what? What happened? I didn't, I didn't plan for that. God doesn't sound like that. I don't know why I did that voice, but <laughs> he's, he's not saying, oh my gosh, oh crap. I didn't know that was going to happen. No. He's like, yeah, I'm allowing this to happen to you because you're ready and you are equipped and you are capable of handling it or else I would never let this come your way at this moment. That's how you can shift your perspective. I'm ready for this. I can cope with this. I can handle this. God has equipped me for this moment. He has given me the just enough energy that I need to get through this situation. And when I walk with him about through it and I talk with him about it, no matter how I'm feeling, you don't have to come to God and be like, okay, God, like, here's my poem for the day. There's my times where I said, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to, to really show me something because I, I, yeah, this is blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind. And, and no, I'm not thankful right now. I don't understand it. I'm trying to be. So can you like, Help me get to this point. Can you help soften my heart in order from and clear my vision and clear my, my spirit and, you know, have your thoughts be my thoughts and your song be my song so that I can get to a place where I am deeply grateful and I can see the opportunity and I can find out what the opportunity is because I really don't want to go through this again. So I, I need your help to even get me to that place, right? It's not an instant reaction for me to be like, oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, I just thank you so much that I had that fight with my husband because I know we gonna be real strong after this. I'm like, you know what, God? Like, are you freaking kidding me? What the heck? And then it takes me a minute to say, okay, let me cool my jets. Let me get my own self out of here because I do not know everything. I don't want to know everything. He knows what's around the corner and that's enough for me. So Lord, what is happening? Is it something that I need to do in my heart? Am I conveying an attitude? Is he going through something that I'm just not seeing because I'm so focused on what he's not doing and not being appreciative and I'm tired and I'm this and and me, 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 that he, maybe he's going through something and I'm just missing that. What is it? Where's the opportunity? And you will find it. He will make that very, very well known to you. But it's all about being able to muster up the courage to have a little bit of that mindset shift. To view the opportunity that is coming out of your circumstance and to know and believe you are not your circumstance. Your circumstances are not the quality of life that you have. By shifting your perspective and finding the opportunity that's coming out of everything that comes your way, even the blessings, that allows you to live above your circumstances. And when you learn to live above your circumstances is when you start to align your life. You start to find that that peace beyond all understanding. You find that joy in the midst of your circumstances. You find the strength Not when you're stable, but you find the strength 
for right now. You find the strength to get through this. You find the opportunity for space. You find the opportunity for grace. You see the good. You start to see how it is all working together for you. And things might be an inconvenience and things might be challenging. Yeah. Welcome to life. Welcome to life. So having that willingness and that awareness, number one, to just take a step back and say, you know what, Lord, I need to look at this. I'm facing this right now and (laughs) I'm so focused on it. I'm so focused on trying to find the answer and I'm so focused on conquering this problem um, that I'm starting to develop anxiety and feelings of worry and tension within my body. So I need you to just come help me and let me see this through your eyes because I know that there's an opportunity for good and I don't want to miss that. I want to learn. I want to grow. How can I do better? I don't want to keep having to try and pass the same test over and over, right? And that opens up the door and you'll probably end up being like, oh my gosh, really? Many times, really, Megan? You're so silly. Many times I've been like, oh my gosh, I really put so much effort and I was so serious about this difficult circumstance and it ended up just (laughs) working out like even better than I thought. Way better. Way. So my challenge to you, I don't even want to say challenge, but my offering to you is Every single day, number one, we're in training. So it's step by step, day by day, a fresh start over in a different way. Pretty sure that's the lyrics of step by step, but they're good, right? But my offering to you is that every time, start with the small things in life. Start with the small difficulties. And that's how you train. So again, going back to living within the confinements of today and creating a daily schedule that you find alignment and balance. When you find the difficult situations, when you find that your plans are thwarted, when you find, you know, circumstances that you weren't expecting or, you know, are like an inconvenience to you, take that as an opportunity to try to envision that. Invite God into that situation and talk to him about it. He's always there. Talk to him about it and ask him to help you see that circumstance in his light from his point of view so that you can see the opportunity that lies within and you can receive the peace and the joy and the blessing that is that this circumstance is creating for you, not to you, not happening to you, but happening for you. And that's how you start to build your life of peace and of joy and of freedom. I hope that you start doing that little by little. If you feel alone, you are not. I'm over here doing it every day. And sometimes my circumstances get the better of me. That's okay. Sometimes, most of the time with practice, I'm able to rise above because with him, you can do anything. So remember, you are equipped. You are already equipped. You are capable. You have the power and the strength to cope with what is in front of you in his name. I hope you all have the most wonderful, empowering week. I can't wait to talk to you next time. Do not forget that I am hosting my very first live interactive workshop called Create Your New Life's Vision, where we work directly together to create a new, a brand new life vision for you that is in complete alignment or incomplete alignment with you, Um, a life that is authentic, that feels good, that builds freedom and peace and energy and joy. So you can get a head start on 2022. Don't get caught falling behind, not this year. And no, ma'am. I will put the link in the show notes. You can also follow me on Instagram at Megan De La Concha and click the link in my bio to register 
This will come out on Monday. Um, the workshop is tomorrow, the 23rd at 7 p.m. You will have, I believe, until noon tomorrow to register. So spaces are limited. Make sure you get on that. And I'm super excited to see you there. And I'll also catch you next week. Have a great day.